Hi, this is Avinash Sharma, and in this session, we will discuss the loops. Loops in R programming language. What are the loops? Loops means cycling or iterating. Sometimes we need to execute, say, some code again and again. Then, for that purpose, we can use the loops. But we have to apply a limit for the loops. How many times the loop will execute? Say, fifty times, or hundred times, or one thousand times. In the R, there are three types of loops: for loop, while loop, and the repeat loop. First of all, we talk about the for loops. As you can see in the syntax, we have a definition: or for, then value in sequence, and then block for this loop. Opening bracket and the closing curly brackets. Within the body of this block, we can uh, uh, write the single or multiple statement. So. In the loop, basically, we have to apply the limit. This loop like, uh, takes the say two parameter, say upper limit or lower limit, or we can say minimum value or maximum value. So as you can see in the diagram, suppose we have the ten item in the list. We mention the ten, and that means the one is the minimum value and ten is the maximum value. So this for loop will check the Item, each and every item in that range. First, first of all, it will start the one, and then in decision bot, automatically internally check is one the last item. No, then execute statement means execute this whole block. Then again go to the list. It will pick the second one, check the last one. No, and whenever the ten comes, then it will check ten is the last one. Then it automatically exits from the loop, so it comes out from this curly brackets here. After this one, now we check the practical of the for loop. So as you can see in the code, we have the for, then the val is the variable name, and we have the one colon five. This is the range, minimum range and the maximum. This will decide the how many times the loop will execute, and then we have the block. Curly brackets opening and curly brackets closing. Within that block, we have statement. One statement it could be multiple statement. Then cat value of val. This is the constant or string. Then comma we have the value. It means the value when the like loop starts. So it will keep the value of the current item in this variable val. And then comma backward slash n. This is for the new line. So after executing the loop five times, then this will jump to the next step and after the this block, and this is the print end of loop. Now we check. So as you can see, value of one, two, three, four, five, and then finally end of loop. We check the another example of the for loop. We can access the items in the collection means list or vector. So here we have a vector. And we declare the vector with the C. C is the uh, keyword, and W K is a variable name. So it could be anything. And then we have the list of days in the vector C. And then for day name, again it's a variable, and in W K, again it's a variable where we assign the vector. Now this loop for loop will automatically. Detect the minimum and the maximum range of this vector. This is the first Monday and this is the last one. Sorry, Sunday and the last one. Now, if we check this one, so this is the result. So this is how you can use the for loop for accessing the item in the vectors. Now, next is the while loop. The difference between the for loop and the while loop is in the for loop. The for loop automatically detects the Minimum range and the maximum range, but in case of the while loop, we apply the condition. That is the expression, and evaluation of that condition is always the boolean. If you check this diagram, always boolean, true or false. So this while loop will check the condition every time till the condition is true. It will continue. Once the condition is false, then 
it exists from the loop. If we check the uh, syntax, then we have the while. While it's a keyword, and here condition that is an expression boolean type true or false. So till the condition is true, then this block, this is statement single or multiple, this block will keep executing till the condition is true. Once the condition is false, then it comes out from the loop here. Now we check the example of the while loop. So we have a variable and the initial value of this equal to 1. And then while keyword and this is the expression. Always produce the result boolean true or false. Here we are checking well less than equal to 5. Initial value it's a 1. It means 1 less than equal to 5. So condition is true. True means execute this one. Now well. The while loop does not increase the value of the variable. We have to put a increment. We are, are increasing the value of the well it's a by 1. Now second time. Now the value of the value is 2, then 2 less than equal to 5, then 3 less than equal to 5, till the 5 comes. Now we check this one, so this is the result, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Suppose we want to like uh, execute this uh, loop in reverse, how, say if I make it 5 and now get that equal to 1 and I make it say decrement. Now initial value of the five where well variable is the 5. Now we are checking well greater than equal to 5. So 5 greater than equal to 1. It means yes, then print this one. Now decrease the value. Now well becomes a 4. Then we check 4 greater than 1, then 3, then 2 and 1 finally. So now we check this one. So this is the result. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Next one in the repeat. In the while loop as we discussed we have the condition and again in the repeat loop we have condition 2. But there is a difference. In the while loop first of all it checks the condition then execute the statement. But in case of the repeat, first of all, it executes the statement, then check the condition. This is the difference between the while loop and the repeat. So you can see the diagram. First of all, execute the statement, then check the condition. And on the basis of the condition true or false, then it will continue or break the loop. Now we check the practical of the repeat loop. So we have the variable that is the value equal to 1 and then repeat. This is the loop. This is the keyword for starting the loop. And we have the body for this loop. Curly brackets opening and the closing. This is the whole body of the loop. Then first of all we print the statement. Print well. Value of the well. Then increment. We are increasing the value by 1. Then we are checking if well greater than 5. Then break. Break the loop. And after break, then it comes out of the loop and then we'll print this statement, print then. So first of all 1, then print 1 and then it becomes 2. Adding 1. And now we are checking 2 greater than 5. No. Then back to the loop. Then 3, then 4, then 5. And then 6. Now 6 greater than 5, yes. Then break and break the loop. Then comes out of this loop and then print this statement end of loop. Now we check this one. So as you can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and then print end of loop. Now we check the practical of the nested loop. Nested loop means loop within the loop or we can say parent loop or the child loop. So you can see in the code, we have a very simple program that is the t equal to 5 and we have a loop, variable outer loop and then range is the 1 to 10 and we are printing that cat 
the value of the t then close constant string and value of the outer value so the value of the t in the loop is constant means fixed value but the value of the outer value it changed from 1 to 10 then we have the multiplication of this one 1 to 10 and then next line so if we check this one so we have a table 5 1 of 5 5 to the 10 5 to the 15 but suppose we need to print the a sequence of the table say 2 to 5 or 2 to 10 so first of all for that purpose we have to use the outer loop now so first of all I make it say 2 to 5 it means in outer loop we are deciding the table sequence from 2 to 5 this will start from the 2 table of 2 then table of 3 then 4 and then 5 and in a loop we use 4 then inner well in and uh, then 10 so this is the outer loop this is the inner loop this inner loop will execute 10 times from 1 to 10 and for for the variable of the outer loop this inner loop each time execute the 10 times it means this is the 2 2 5 2 3 4 5 4 values and the 10 it means the loop will execute the 40 times in a loop so first of all this will take this variable now we remove this one we don't need this one and outer value now we replace like this one so first of all it will lead this outer loop and it will take a value the initial value is 2 then it will within the inner loop the value of the outer loop is fixed 2 and this loop inner loop will execute 10 times inner value we start with the 1 2 3 up to 10 and the multiplication of the this one after execution of the 10 times then again back to the parent loop now the value is 3 again 10 times for the 3 then 4 then 5 so till all the range of the outer loop exhausted the inner loop will keep continue now we check so you can see table of 2 first of all after that table of 3 then table of 4 then table of 5 so this task can be done easily with the nested loop so guys this was all about the loops in R programming language please like the video and subscribe the channel. Thanks for watching the video.